Hey everybody. Today I'm using R to analyze the Ravelry yarn database. This was featured as part of the Tidy Tuesday challenge in October of 2022. I'm going to get the data directly from their GitHub. You'll see I've loaded up Tidyverse and the Tidy Tuesday R package. Um, that's how I'm getting the data. I've set my theme to minimal. I don't love ggplot's default gray background. Lines five and six are actually where I'm downloading the data using the tidy Tuesday R function TT load and then saving the data set as yarn. If we take a look at this set, we can see that there's 100,000 observations here. Each one is a specific kind of yarn. We have the name of the yarn. Permalink here doesn't actually give you a clickable link, but it does give you something that is a pretty good Google search term, I find. Um, there's lots of technical variables here that I don't quite understand at a glance. Um, for instance, gauge divisor, I don't know what that means, min and max gauge. Um, rating average, rating count are fairly clear. But unless you really know a lot about yarn, you might not know specifically what texture is referring to, um, WPI, and a number of these other variables. Yarn weight name is a little bit mysterious. Given that that's the case, I strongly advise trying to learn a little bit about actual yarn before doing any kind of, uh, any kind of data analysis. So what I'm going to do is actually um, go over just to this first thing in my set, Red Heart Super Saver Solids, um, and I'm just going to Google it. So I'm going to do a Google search for Ravelry, where this data comes from, and then just paste in those other terms. And I get a hit, which is nice. And so we're going to be able to see on Ravelry the, um, some information about this actual yarn. So there's a nice little picture of it. And um, you can see some of the variables from that data set right here. For instance, unit weight, gauge, um, oh, WPI, wraps per inch. Now I understand that one. Weight, Aaron, Aaron, I don't know how to pronounce that, I'm sorry. 8 wraps per inch with a little question mark. So we can even learn a little more there. So we see that each of these different um, weight names, and if you remember in our data set here, we actually have a weight name column here somewhere. There it is, yarn weight name. Um, each of those are referring to yarns of um, sort of different thicknesses. And so we've got the gauge, which has to do with um, it's some measure of how thick the yarn is, apparently. It also has to do with the wraps per inch. Um, the knit gauge here is interesting. Notice it says 4 inches or 10 centimeters. Those are about the same unit of measure. Here, if I look at gauge for this uh, Super Saver Solid yarn, I see 17 STS is 4 inches. So what I'm seeing here is the number of stitches, STS, I googled that separately, that can be fit into four inches. And um, that sheds some light on this weight gauge um, divisor measurement here, gauge divisor. So you'll see that some of the yarns in this set give you the number of stitches in 10 inches or some other number. So if we're going to do anything that has to do with gauge, we're going to want to standardize that in some way. Um, now, as I glance through this set, one of the very first things that's jumping out at me is that there's just a lot of missing values. Machine washable, max gauge, um, a number of other things. Thread size is almost entirely missing. So I'm going to want to get some counts on that. I'd like to know which of these variables have a lot of missing values and which don't. If I'm going to analyze some of these variables, I should know if I'm analyzing a tiny subset of the data, if I'm analyzing the whole thing, somewhere in between. Um, I always urge you to remember that the missing data in a set says every bit as much as the data that's actually there. And you need to take it into account as, um, as a priority item. And if you're just immediately jumping in with a drop NA command or something, you're really probably doing something wrong. So uh, let's see here. How are NAs distributed? So let's just do one column first. Let's look at, um, I don't know, let's look at maybe max gauge because I'm seeing a lot of NAs there. So what I want to do is I want to take is.na of yarn dollar max gauge. 
So that's going to give me a vector of length 100,000. It's going to be all trues and falses. True when you have an NA, false when you don't. And I'm going to take the mean of that because I just want to know the average. OK, so the, um, what we're seeing here, 0.7963, is that almost 80% of the rows in this data set have an NA for max gauge. So max gauge might not be the best variable for us to be looking at here. By the way, um, if you look at this data set, for instance, with the super saver solids with the min gauge of 17, you can see here that 17 is corresponding to this 17 stitches um, per four inches. Some of the yarns in this set will have a range, like 17 to 20, and that gives you your min gauge and your max gauge. Clearly, most of the values in this set don't have that. I only know that because I looked at a handful of different yarns before I made this vid. OK, let's uh, get information for all the columns now. So what I'd like to do is to take this mean NA, mean of is NA, for the entire vector here, and do that for every single column at once. And um, there's lots of different ways to do this. I think the first thing I'm going to do is, um, is to use a summarize command. So I want to take yarn, and I'm going to save it as yarn NA count, I guess, counts. I'm going to take yarn, and I'm going to pipe it into a summarize command. By the way, here I'm using the more um, up-to-date pipe version. It's the same as the percent greater than percent that you might have seen in other vids. Um, for my summarize command, I want to get a summary that's going to include all the columns. And so I'm going to use the across command. The across command says, do the following stuff to um, whatever columns I'm going to specify with the first argument in across. And I want to do it to everything. Easy enough. And the thing I want to do to everything is this uh, mean is NA. I guess I can copy that and paste it. Now, um, of course, there's not a single function here that I'm using um, that I can just call. So I'm going to need to define a function on the fly. And I could do that longhand. I'm going to use an abbreviation. I'm going to define this as an anonymous function with this sort of wave notation. And I have to make sure I get the number of parentheses correct here. So um, across every column, define a function um, as the mean of is NA. So it's going to take the average number of NAs in that column and apply that to every single column in the set. I think I need one more closed parenthesis here. There we go. Let's take a look. Yarn, not yarn, NA counts. There we go. OK, so the max gauge NA rate is about 80%, not too surprising. Almost half of the yarns in this data set don't have machine washability ratings, so I'd want to be very careful doing any real analysis on that. Um, you shouldn't assume that the yarns that don't have ratings for machine washability are the same as, um, as the other kinds. These could be not at random. OK, so um, let's see here. I'm missing gauge divisor on about 30%. I'm also missing min gauge on about 30%. Um, notice I do have the grams weight on almost all of them. If I look at grams here, 100 grams, 198 grams. In particular, notice the 198 here in that first row. So um, that 198 grams is the weight of the entire, um, I don't know the technical term for this package of yarn. But if you zoom way, way in on it, you can actually see the 198 in there somewhere. That's probably not quite visible to you there, but it's, it's there. Um, so this is a number that really shouldn't be missing very often. It says it right on the package. You don't have to do any kind of measurement. You don't have to look at any factory, factory specs to see that. There's another measure on here that's kind of like that. And that's yardage. Yardage is another one that's generally on the packaging for the yarn. And so there shouldn't be a lot of missing values here. And if I find yardage here somewhere, there, we're only missing that in about 4% of cases. So these are much more reliable measures just in terms of like actually being present in the data. Um, they're also um, sort of more macroscopic in that they're describing an entire um, unit of yarn rather than, than some measurement of um, how instantaneously thick or heavy it is. 
So um, my big idea for this vid is uh, can we impute, can we impute or replace missing NA values for, um, gauge, for min gauge, which we know is kind of a stand-in for gauge um, in most of the cases, um, using grams and yardage. And so I should still expect to have some missing values if I take into account yarn, um, grams, and yardage, because I'm missing those values in you know, something like 4 or 5% of cases. Um, I should also expect the imputation to be imperfect. What I'm having in mind here is to sort of do a little bit of math using these numbers and get a prediction back for what the minimum gauge would be based on the data that I do have. But I should expect that I'm going to be off by a little bit in some cases, possibly uh, most cases, and potentially off by a lot in a few cases. So while I would love to have everything perfect, that's not a fully realistic expectation here. Um, now, there are some weird things going on in the data that I noticed as I was preparing this vid that I want to point out um, right away. So some weirdness. And you can see it. Um, see the first sort of weirdness. If you just do a summary um, on yarn dollar, I think I was looking at yardage before, so let's stick with that. So uh, in particular, note the min. We have some packages of yarn that have zero yards included, and that seems strange to me. Let's uh, see which rows in this data set actually have that as the case. So um, maybe I'll call this weird. <laughs> it's a temporary name. I don't need to think about it so much, right? And I'm going to filter yarn. And I want uh, yardage to be equal to 0. And let's take a look at weird. OK, so there's 86 of these. And as you can see, they all have yardage 0. Um, let's see here. So this does seem to be an actual kind of yarn. It's Kmart's Sayel yarn. I already, give, I already Googled that one. It's right here. And um, in particular, I noticed that the yardage is actually 240. So this is some sort, of, um, some sort of mistake. Possibly it was human data entry error. Possibly there's something technological that happened when um, some sort of database was queried. We just don't really know. Um, there's two, there's 86 different rows here, and one way or another, we really, really, really would like to fill in some of these values. Who knows? Maybe many of these other columns could be filled in as well. Um, let's at least fill in this one. Again, the Kmart sale has a yardage of 240, so let's put that in there. Sort of as a proof of concept. <laughs> OK, so um, there's probably a tidy way to do this. I'm not thinking of it, thinking of it um, today, so I'm just going to do it a little bit more directly. I want yarn um, dollar, let's see, so what was I looking at? I was looking at, I don't want to do the name. I want to do the permalink, Kmart sale. And with this, you have to be a little careful to make sure there's only one Kmart sale. I've already verified that. It's OK. And um, the the um, that's the column I want, right? Um, no, that's the row I want. That's right. And then the column that I want is uh, yardage, of course. And I want to replace that with 240. And that should fix it. If we were to find Kmart sale in this uh, in this data set, we would now be able to see that it has a yardage of 240. So ideally, we would do that over and over and over again, find some programmatic way to do it, have a, um, an assistant do it, something like that. 
Um, let's see here. There are also zeros for grams. And you can see that here in the weird data set right here. This very second one has a zero for grams. So we'd want to go around and, and take care of that. So for um, brevity, it is a YouTube video after all. Um, we're going to just filter these out. Not ideal, not the worst either. Again, remember, we're trying to make a data set that we can use for imputation to fill in some missing values. So it's OK if we're throwing away um, a small number, or it's not, not the end of the world, let's say, if we're doing that. So how about uh, yarn small? Let's make sure that we remember that it's smaller. We're going to do a filter on yarn. Let me not forget to use my pipe. And um, I want to do grams greater than zero. And I want to do yardage greater than zero. And that should be good for now. And uh, then I want to add a column. Let's do this all at once with a mutate command. And the column I'm going to want to add is sort of a density column. The idea is if I take the um, total weight, or I guess mass, of the yarn, the number of grams, and divide it by the yardage, I'm going to get sort of a linear density. So I'll call that dens. I'm not going to call it density because that conflicts with, uh, with other commands in R. And so I want to take, what did I just say? Grams divided by yardage. And since I took away all of the zeros for yardage, this division is going to be valid. We'll make sure that works. It does. While I'm at it, I want to get um, I want to deal with the fact that gauge divisor here is different for different yarns. Even though I'm only seeing fours right up front, there are other values. And so min gauge is referring to the number of stitches in that unit of length. So what I'm going to do is divide by gauge divisor so that uh, I always have the um, things sort of standardized. Now remember that gauge divisor is missing like 30% of values and so is min gauge. It's missing like 30% of values. So this yarn small set really is going to be a lot smaller. Here I am dropping a lot of values. Um, that's going to be necessary, right? My point is to impute these missing values to whatever degree possible to fill in some values um, using the ones that I do have, fill in some missing values using the ones that I do have. So how about I call this gauge standard, standardized to one. And so what I want to make that is min gauge. And I want to divide, I want to divide that by gauge divisor. And um, if I look at yarn small, so first of all, notice I've got a number. Um, it's a much smaller number of rows, only 93,000 rows. Um, that's because of the filter. And if I look at these new columns that I've made, um, dens for density and gauge standard, um, if I start looking down here, um, there's there should be some missing values in there somewhere. That was there we go. There's at least one. I know there should be a lot more. OK, great. So I have these two variables, dense and gauge standard. And so now I'm interested in how, to, how they relate to one another. So how do dens and gauge standard relate in this smaller set. So I'm doing a ggplot, of course, with yarn small. And in this case, I want to view dens as my explanatory variable. That's the thing I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be having access to. I want to use that to do the imputation of the, um, of the gauge standard. Y is going to be gauge standard. And let's do a geom point. We'll just start with that. I'll mess with it in a second. It's a larger set still, so it'll take a second for it to come up. Let's zoom in on it. 
Okay, not the most uh, joyful scatter plot in the world. I'm sure there's a lot of overplotting here, first of all. There's 93,000 values in this data set, so we're not seeing nearly 93,000 points here visually. The other thing is that everything is very cluttered towards zero. There's a few very sort of wide or very dense yarns, but uh, they all tend, but the large majority tends to be smaller. When I see a scatter plot or histogram that's all clustered towards zero, I wonder if a logarithmic transformation might be helpful. Logarithmic transformation takes the raw values and instead reports on the scale. I'll do a base 10 log logarithmic transform so that really what we're seeing is like the number of zeros on the end or the number of decimal points, um, number of zeros before if it's a decimal. So um, there's lots of different things I could do here. I'm going to actually just put it right here using the log 10 function. And uh, I'm going to do that to both of my variables. I know I could change the scale, but I'm not going to. Okay, so there's something. Before I comment too much on it, let's put a little bit of transparency on here with alpha equals not 1, 0.1 is what I want. And I would be tinkering around with different uh, alpha levels to see if making this even more transparent or less transparent would make it more descriptive. Uh, so I feel really good about this. It's um, it's not exactly linear, but I feel like a linear regression is a reasonable thing to be doing here. Doing sort of a linear imputation seems like a reasonable thing. One thing that does jump out at me, however, is down at the bottom here, we've got a number of values just like sitting on the floor, kind of. So what's going on here is that gauge standard has some zeros in it too. And we didn't detect that before because we were just thinking about density. So um, I... There's, there's no such thing as a yarn that has a zero gauge, or if there is, it means something completely different than a yarn that has um, a non-zero gauge. It's referring to something entirely different. So I'm going to want to remove those from the set as well, using the same philosophy as when I removed these other points, acknowledging that we are throwing away data, that um, for a full model on this data set, it could be problematic. But for the purposes of imp imputation, it's going to be necessary. So let's remove the zeros from gauge min as well. Well, from gauge, I guess it's standard is good enough, because all I did was divide by some simple numbers. So yarn small. <laughs> I'm going to take yarn small. And I'm going to do a filter so that gauge standard has to be greater than zero. All right, now let's uh, let's copy and paste this ggplot. And while I'm at it, I'm going to put a regression line on it since it looks like a regression line is appropriate now. And I'll zoom in on that as soon as it comes up. Great, fabulous, I'm happy with this. I want to now get the equation of this regression line and, um, and use it to impute some values. So what I'm going to be doing is getting a linear model using the lm command. Put in a comment here. And uh, my response variable is, of course, going to be log 10 of dens. It's going to be modeled by log 10. Wait, my response variable is log 10 of gauge standard. And it's going to be modeled by log 10 of dens. And the data is yarn small. Let's get the summary on that. Okay, so we have some coefficients here. I'll talk about those in a second. We have some overall performance on our model. Um, we have a multiple R squared of about 70%. So you can guess that by looking at the picture. 
by the way, I should say, I'm not running model, I haven't run model, I'm not going to run model, model diagnostics on this, for instance, with plot model. I encourage you to do that on your own. Suffice it to say, it's not a perfect model. And in particular, the residuals here are over dispersed. Um, I gave that some thought before the vid. I don't think it's a problem for this imputation. There's a lot of variability in this data set. And um, as you look at that um, image here, um, you can even sort of see that there's more spread than there would be in a um, more spread away from the regression line than there would, in, would be in a bivariate normal. Anyway, that's a, a whole rabbit hole. I'm not trying to get the best model possible for this data. I want to get a simple and effective one that's going to allow me to um, impute these values in a very understandable way, hopefully, a very clear way. Okay, so let's comment. The model says that, and I'll start a new line for this. I've got these coefficients log base 10, oh, I lost my cursor, log base 10 of gauge standard is equal to, all right, so our we've got an intercept term here, 0.495 minus a slope, 0.514 times the log base 10 of density, linear density, okay, uh, plus some error, right? There's always going to be some, uh, or generally going to be some residuals. So for instance, now I could take a, a 10 to the x on both sides. So gauge standard is 10 to this whole power, because uh, 10 to a certain power undoes a base 10 logarithm. So this gives me um, a pretty simple formula for modeling gauge standard on the basis of density, which of course is yardage divided by, um, grams divided by yardage. And um, this will work for a pretty large percentage of the values in our original yarn data set. So remember, in our original data set, we have grams for all except for about 4% and similar for yardage. We have it for um, just about um, 96%. It's around here somewhere. There it is. Yeah, we're missing it for a little more than 4% in that case. All right, so let's actually do our imputation. So let's, just for safety, I'm going to save this as yarn new. And I'm going to mutate yarn and I want to create a new column. How about uh, gauge standard imputed? And I really just want to do this model right here. All right, see how much of this I can actually copy and paste. I have to copy it carefully or check it carefully. Uh, log 10 of dens does yarn doesn't actually have dens, does it? It doesn't. I did that only with yarn small. So instead of dens, I have to do uh, yarded. I have to do grams divided by yardage. Now I have to think back to everything that I did when I um, took yarn and made yarn small now, right? So I filtered out a bunch of zeros here. So in particular, in some of this math down here, I'm going to be dividing by zero. So some of these values are going to be questionable. I really want to be a bit more careful than this and go through and, and deal with those values. And I'm missing a parenthesis here at the end, it looks like. One, two, three. There we go. Okay. So I'll put a comment there. Um, note there are some problematic values here. Zeros and infinities. As well as missing values. Of course missing values. That we're expecting. However, because I want to get to the end of this video um, eventually, I'm not going to deal with that right now. I just want to... Um, 
take a look comparing gauge standard in the yarn data set with um, with gauge imputed. Now, in the yarn data set, I don't have a gauge standard any more than I have a dens variable, so I'll have to deal with that, but I'll just do that on the fly. All right, so on the x-axis, let's get uh, gauge min divided by gauge divisor. So that's my, um, that's my standardized value, right? That's my gauge standard. And on the y-axis, I'll put gauge standard imputed. A geom point. And let's, I don't think I want to put a smoother on there right now. Let's just start with this. This isn't quite my final copy yet. Maybe you can guess why while we're waiting. Oh, it's min gauge. Excuse me. Isn't it min gauge? Not gauge min? Yeah, it's min gauge. Fix that. And I have another error. Oh, yarn new. Getting sloppy at the end of this vid. Okay. So, um... While you were waiting me to figure out those errors, hopefully you were able to give a little bit of thought and um, to, to why this plot wouldn't be ideal. It's not on a logarithmic scale. The um, min gauge and the gauge standard imputed are both going to be most visually clear when they're on a logarithmic scale. So I'm going to want to take care of that. Let me uh, just realign that, and then I'll do a log on this log 10, and I'll do a log 10 here. I'm also expecting this graph to look a lot like the one I had a little bit ago. Where'd it go? Maybe I'll just rerun it rather than trying to guess at it. It's probably going to look a lot like this in terms of the amount of spread that it has. It's not, not a radically different plot. We expect um, a large number of missing rows. I'm zoom in on this. OK, so there it is. The imputed values are a reasonably tight fit to the, um, to the existing values in cases where we have all the data.